I've decided to start a co-location project and I'm now going to be co-locating this server in a data center. Co-location is where you rent a chunk of space in a data center and now you can use that rack space for whatever you want, put whatever hardware you want, as long as it meets their requirements. As opposed to buying a cloud instance where they kind of manage the hardware for you, you get to pick the servers, you get to pick what OSs run on those servers, you get to manage all of the hardware that goes in the servers, and they just manage the rack space, power, and network that goes into it. The other big advantage is it's often quite a bit cheaper to do co-location. Especially for my use where I wanted a large amount of storage where this box has mini hard drives and also wanted a reasonable amount of compute, this turned out to be much cheaper than EC2 nodes or Google Cloud Compute nodes or things like that. I also wanted to play a little bit more lower level and because I get to run the hypervisor on here and play with the hardware, I can do a lot more low level tweaking that Amazon or Google would never let me do. The disadvantage of co-location is you do have to know the hardware setup. You do need to know how to do things like install hypervisors. The cloud kind of the big push was you don't have to know the basics and the low level hardware things and they'll do that all for you. You are paying for that though. And that is one advantage of co-location. You're not paying for them to manage hardware for you. And I enjoy managing hardware. So it's kind of a great setup for me. Now more into what I'm going to be using this for. So I wanted a few things. First of all, I wanted to be able to run VMs off site. So I wanted to run things like a website or stuff like that, or I can host it. And compared to hosting it on your home internet connection, you get a higher quality connection. It's you're able to use it for commercial use and there's no restrictions on that. Some home ISPs are kind of picky. You get a much higher quality connection with like an SLA. You get multiple IPs. So in this case, I have a slash 29 of IPs to use for whatever I want. You get higher quality power. So they have um, UPSs and redundant power for the whole thing. So it's much less likely to be affected by power outages than a normal home connection. I'd say even less likely than like a home connection with your own UPS. Also, it's a generally more secured facility than most homes would be. Home break-ins do happen. And sometimes computer hardware gets taken or messed with. And it's much less likely to happen in data center. They have a lot more access requirements to monitor it all the time. So there was quite a few advantages of doing this compared to hosting in your home. The other thing I wanted was offsite backups. Um, compared to prices like things like S3 Glacier, I can fit a lot of storage in this box and it turned out to be a lot cheaper for offsite backups. For me. I also wanted to just use it as kind of a fun learning project. I'm going to set up VPNs between this and my home network. I'm going to use it maybe to set up VPNs with other people's networks and kind of make like a LAN, fake LAN network to play games on, game servers, a lot of little things. I'm just kind of going into this. I've had fun with home servers and this is, I see it as kind of another growing path into that. I'm going to go more into this in kind of a software follow-up video going into my software setup, what all I'm running on it, and kind of how it's dealt with the load. Now let's go take a little bit look inside and on the hardware. So I bought this unit as a bare bones from ASRock Rack. Um, I was looking for a one use server that was relatively affordable. I could fit quite a few hard drives in it because I've wanted to fit probably 30-ish terabytes of usable storage space. Um, I had a 200 watt limit and one U that I would have to fit into. Had to have rails and standard rack mount equipment. I wanted IPMI for remote management if needed because then I can do things like update the BIOS or change BIOS settings or reinstall the OS if needed remotely. And I wanted a relatively decent amount of compute power. And it kind of kept getting led to Ryzen and Ryzen kept looking like a great option for the platform. And unfortunately compared to things like the Intel Xeon platform, there's just much fewer options. So this is really the only option I had for that. So this is an ASRock Rack 1U um, 4WL-X470. So it has an X470 chipset in it and I've added a lot to it. So as a bare bones, it didn't come with any of these drives. It didn't come with any RAM, didn't come with a CPU, and you just had to add those all yourself. So for drives, I've added a few different drives. So in the front, I have four three and a half inch bays, all hot toppable, and I've put in 14 terabyte easy store drives. So these are shucked easy stores. Um, I bought these drives because they were $190 and almost all the other 14 terabytes were about 300 and I determined that the chance of these drives failing was not that much higher I'd guess and that I could buy basically another drive if they did fail. 
So I was thinking it wouldn't probably be worth the differences um, in price to buy those. For SSDs, I have these three 2TB Micron drives. I use these because I already had them laying around as another VM drive. If you looked at my previous video, I swapped these in my main VM server with another SSD. And these, some of these are getting near the end on their life. These are set up as mirrored, with this one being a um, hot spare, so if it dies, it gets replaced. I didn't really need all the extra space for VMs, and I determined that it would be better to have the automatic repair just to lower the chance that I have to replace hardware when it's in a data center. These fans and these backboards all included, it was all pre-wired. Um, Hardware-wise, I'd say, in general, is okay. I've worked with a lot of other Dell servers that I'd say are much better built. There's a lot of things just like the fans aren't great, but it's fine. This plastic air shroud is just really, I'd say, bad in how it's constructed. It just didn't seem to fit right. I had to actually cut a little piece out and I was looking at it like, either I have no idea how to make this fit or they did something wrong. And I'm guessing they did something wrong, but I got it in and I'm not touching it. Under here is a heat sink for the CPU. Um, there's a Ryzen 9 3900X under here. I just determined the 3900X would be a reasonable compromise between CPU performance, power consumption, and cost. The 12 cores can do quite a bit. I've been playing around with some benchmarks with like video encoding, which I might do on here, and compression, and it's very fast. 128 gigs of DDR4 non-ECC unbuffered DIMMs. I was looking at the price difference to get ECC and just determined for my use and the way I'm setting it up, I don't care. Won't matter. It's up to everyone's opinion. I know some people love it, some hate it. I know about the risks, so that's it. Um, and as a single power supply. They do make a model for dual power supply, but in the way I'm using it, didn't matter. Um, and then this board has kind of the rest of it. So this board has the um, IPMI module, so it lets you do remote management if you want to change any settings on it um, remotely. It has it's a relatively simple board. It's actually a great little board for servers. Um, if you're looking for a server Ryzen board, I'd say go for it. Here's the little heat sink that came with it. You can see there's a couple little heat pipes and some fins. There's a lot of airflow in this case, which is the only reason you can cool the 105 watt CPU in here relatively reasonably. All of this came wired up, all these little cables for the front panel, all the SATA connections. I have two Optane 16 gig drives I'm using for boot. Um, I'm running Proxmox on this. They're perfectly fine space-wise. Performance doesn't matter, though they are pretty much the fastest drives on the market for boot up. Um, endurance is plenty on these, are basically unused drives. I can't think of a reason not to use these sorts of drives for this use case. So, I'm quite happy with them. Um, and that's it. The PCIe slot is empty currently. I can only use gigabit networking, so I can't put that there. And there's not too much else I can think. I was, like maybe a GPU, but this can already do video encoding pretty well. Overall, with this ASRock Rack Barebones, I'd say if you're looking for a 1U um, Ryzen server, it's, well, the only option, and it's fine. If you are used to Dell's and kind of expectation with their quality, it is a lower quality unit, but it's definitely fine for most uses, I'd say, of a server. Um, for kind of a budget small business server, I think the disadvantage is you have to either buy it with someone with support, because I just bought it from Amazon, there's no support. So if you need support, buy it from there. But compared to something like a Dell R240, I'd say it's quite competitive. Um, I don't think the 240 has these extra two and a half inch drives in the front. The M.2s are really nice for boot up devices. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably take this under a 240 for a lot of uses. I've already done quite a bit of software setup, so I'm just kind of going to get this ready for the final um, setup before I'm, I ship it off. So I'm going to have to change some IPs to the ones of the network that it will be in now. And then I'm going to double check everything's held down because it's going to be shipped away um, quite a distance. And just check on all the connectors to make sure everything's functioning as um, expected. I'm probably going to go disable IMPI sharing on the main port. Um, just because I don't want that to be a security risk. And I know it's been a risk in the past. And I'm fine with just using Proxmox as the interface. And worst case, having a tech connected into the dedicated management port. Let's talk power consumption for a second. So due to my co-location agreement, I'm limited to 200 watts for this system. So I have a kilowatt plugged into it right now. It's using about two and a half watts. That's the IPMI mostly. It's just running off the standby rail on this power supply. 
doing almost nothing. And if I press the power button, this is definitely not a quiet server by any means. It's gonna start revving everything up and it's pulling about 130 watts. I finished its software configuration, set its IPs. Everything looks good there. I did a little bit of power consumption testing. It's about 84 watts at idle, about 185 max load. So it fits under my 200 watt limit. Opening it up, I've checked all the cables and connectors so they all look in place, like nothing's gonna move. Checked all these SATA cables, checked all the other ones. I've set it so it'll automatically power on on boot up. I've labeled the two network connectors with numbers so I can easily say, hey, which one's which. I'm gonna put a little stick on it telling which cable I want connected to which port. Other than that, that looks ready. I, I, I'm i trying to make sure I check everything so I don't have to like pay for hands to change anything, um, but it looks like it's passing every check I can think of right now. I think I've finished setting up everything I reasonably can on this system. It looks metal now because I took off that plastic covering. If I take the top off, everything inside is set up correctly. Everything looks like it's basically ready to go. I don't know of anything else that I can set up. I'm going to just do one last test now of the hardware and plug it in to make sure it turns on as expected powers up the networking and displays on the monitor. And here's its boot up procedure. Um, it says the BMC is initializing and then once the BMC finishes initializing it does its normal post and then I go into Proxmox and it's ready for use. Yeah everything's been set up IP range wise. I have um, it set to just boot up when it plugs in. I think that's about it I can reasonably do right now. Gonna pull the plug I, I keep testing it to make sure I haven't missed something and I haven't found anything yet. Starts up, fires up SSH and the Proxmox web UI, which is all I need to get in. And I can use IPMI worst case, so I'm happy.